Hi, I'm Ron Polk. And by request, I'm going to show you how to take a closet rod or a dowel and turn it down to the exact size you need. I made this peg 20 millimeters to go with a jig that I made for cutting the clamping holes on my benches. I've made a number of benches and cut the holes many different ways and decided that it was time to come up with a simple, effective way to do it. And I showed this in another video when I was making the total station on how to use it. But it's simply a piece of half inch plywood, eight feet long, and it has a line of holes laid out specifically for an eight foot bench and a six foot bench so it can be used on both so I get double duty out of the jig and it makes a 20 millimeter hole. I wasn't able to make a 20 millimeter hole before. It's very difficult to find a 20 millimeter router bit and if you can find them they're usually very expensive. So I've been making three quarter holes in my other benches but I decided to make the 20 millimeter holes so they're more universal. What I was able to do is come up with the math to drill a hole in the jig with a bit that I was able to buy at the store. And I laid out the holes, drilled them specifically uh, in, in the exact location, drilled partially through one side, flipped it over and finished the hole so I got real clean cut holes. And using a standard quarter inch upcut spiral bit, I was able to use a template guide and sized with this 15 16 hole, when I go in and make the cut with the offset, I then have a 20 millimeter hole with a very inexpensive bit. With the jig, I'm able to lay them out perfectly every time. Well, obviously I marched the holes up the bench and so I wanted an alignment system. And so I came up with a set of holes again laid out to fit in the layout of the bench both eight feet and six feet because that's the two sizes of benches that I have. But the alignment holes needed to be 20 millimeters because I would be dropping them into the finished holes in the bench as I went which would be 20 millimeters. So I needed two things. One I needed these holes could not be 15 sixteenths they had to be 20 millimeters because they had to line up and uh, be able to be pegged with the jig. So I just simply took a piece of plywood, drilled the 15 16 hole in it, a bigger piece. I was able to clamp it right, you know, in fact, I drilled two holes with the proper layout. And then I was able to clamp it, make the two holes. I had the layout there, did the same thing. So I was able to make a series of 20 millimeter holes in, again, just to drop the peg in. Well, then I needed a 20 millimeter peg, but I wanted to drop it in and have it stop. And you know, we don't have a closet rod or dowels that are 20 millimeters. I needed to come up with a way to turn a piece of scrap closet rod down to 20 millimeters. So what I did was I made a jig to sit on the table saw and I'll show you how I use it in a minute, but it's pretty straightforward. It's five pieces of plywood, three pieces of three quarter, two pieces of half inch. The half inch are ripped and then just butt together and screwed together to create a perfect 90 degree corner. And then I inserted it in the rest of the jig, you know, at a, an angle so that it created a perfect V to set the dowel in. So it would just hold any size dowel really. And then uh, the bottom piece is just the, the blank solid piece that I then took two pieces and ripped a 45 on each piece and then butted them together and screwed them down and it created that small V. Now I could have just used that V and, and eliminated this part. That would have also worked. But I went ahead and added this other part just to give me a little more support. So it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple jig to build. Essentially you just want a way to hold the dowel so that I can then spin it on the table saw. To use the jig, I want to clamp it on the table saw so that it's square to the blade. There's a number of ways to do it. I could take the crosscut fence, put that on and square it up. I'm just going to take a chunk of plywood. I want it a little bit separated from the blade, not up tight. So I'm going to take a just a chunk of scrap half inch plywood, butt it up to there, kind of just sort of get it centered. It doesn't really matter if it's exactly centered, but I want it pretty square. 
So get it square and then I'm going to clamp it to my table saw in a couple of locations just so it doesn't move. It's not a lot of pressure on it, but I don't want it moving around or vibrating loose. Once I have it clamped solid, then what I need to do is take the dowel, find the center point, and there's a number of ways to do that, and then measure from the center point half the distance of what I want. So this is 10 millimeters. I have a metric tape measure, so that helps. And then I'm going to set the saw blade to that height or close to it. If anything, I'll go a little bit less than that so I can work up on it and get it perfect. And then I'll just check it with my caliper, which I have it set to metric for now. And I can just check it and check it until I get the cut just right, and then I'll finish it. I have my 10 millimeter mark from the center on the dowel. I'm gonna take the blade and put it below the dowel and just to the outside edge here so that I can see where I'm cutting to and I'll, I'll bring the blade up to that point. So I've got it started, now I will check my dimension. And I'm in about 21 plus, so I'll take the blade up just a little bit more. Okay, now that I have it, the blade to the right depth, then I'll just determine how far in I want to go. And now I'll just start on the furthest end part and make that cut and get it nice and round and just work my way out. Now it's cut down to 20 millimeters. I just take a piece of sandpaper and just sand the rough edges off, but it's, it centers it perfectly. And then I will just put it on the miter saw and cut it to probably about five or six inches. And then I can make another one. This is a job that could also be done on a lathe, but I don't own a lathe. I don't plan on buying a lathe. And the plywood is just scrap and only took a few minutes to make. And I can toss it in my trailer and have it on the job site when I run into similar situations. If you find these tips helpful, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share it with others. And if you want a set of workbench plans, click on the link right here in the video. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.